it's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Howdy! We're now on lesson number two, graph transformations. And we're really looking at this first transformation. Well, what do I mean by that term? Let's look at that first of all. So a graph transformation is when we move or shift or resize or reflect a graph by altering somehow its function. In higher math, there are six transformations that we are going to look at, and this is them. We have y equals f of x plus or minus a, y equals f of x plus or minus a, y equals negative f of x, y equals f of negative x, y equals kf of x, and y equals f of kx. What we're going to do then across the next six lessons is look at each of the functions. Let's look at how they're altered and see how that's going to change the shape of the graph. So the first one, y equals f of x plus or minus a. Let's look back to some of the graphs that we've seen in previous years. Let's just take a basic sine graph. So y equals sine x. It looks something like this. If I asked you to graph y equals sine x plus 1 or y equals sine x minus 2, hopefully you remember that the plus or minus on the end will move the graph vertically up or down. So if I asked you to graph y equals sine x plus 1, I'm changing this to a dotted line. That's just the original. And I'm going to draw this sine x plus 1 on the same graph. Every single point then is going to move up one place. So instead of being 0, 0, that point will move up one place. Instead of being at 90, 1, that will move up one place as well. The y values are going to increase by 1. So instead of 180, 0, it'll be 180, 1. So every single point is moving up. Let's take another graph, y equals 2 cos x. So the amplitude this time is 2, so your cos x graph is going between 2 and negative 2. And again, plus or minus on the end is going to shift the graph vertically up or down. Let's say I asked you to graph y equals 2 cos x minus 3. Well, the minus 3 is going to move every single point down 3. Keeping that same shape then, the graph will just be moving down, and it will look something like that. Looking at the points, instead of being 0, 2, the y value will decrease by 3, so it will be at 0, negative 1. Instead of being at 90, 0, it will be at 90, negative 3. And that will follow right the way along. This rule really with the plus or minus on the end is true for any function, not just sine x or cos x or any of the ones that I've just shown you. Whenever you have a function and you've got a plus or minus on the end, it's going to move the graph vertically up or down. Let's take an example then. So look at a graph and let's see if we can sketch y equals f of x plus 5. So there's our graph. We're just going to call it y equals f of x. It's not a sine graph, it's not a cost graph, it's just a random graph that's drawn. I'm calling it f of x. I've got some points on it, and I want you to sketch y equals f of x plus 5. Let's make it a bit bigger, just over the page. So with the plus 5, we know then that every single point is going to move up 5. So this graph will be moving up. If you think about every single point then, negative 1, 8, well, the y value is increasing by 5, so that, if it goes up by 5, we'll now be at negative 1, 13. Where it crosses the y-axis at 6, if you add on 5, it'll cross the y-axis at 11. This point here, 3, negative 2, if you add 5 to the y value, that'll then be at 3, 3. So you can see every single point has moved up by 5. If you put them side by side, you can see that this graph on the right, the plus 5, is just going to be a bit higher. It's the same shape, it's just moved up slightly. Or it might help if you have them on the same graph. You can easily see that the blue line is higher than the other. Let's look at example 2. So here is the graph of f of x equals x squared plus 6x. First of all, identify the points a, b and c. And secondly, sketch the graph of f of x plus 8 and state the images of the points a, b and c. So in other words, where would the points a, b and c end up if you sketched f of x plus 8? So first of all, identify the points a, b and c. How could you go about doing that? 
how could you find out those points? Grace, I see you flapping your arms about like a chicken. What are you saying? Is that it equal to zero? Yes, you are perfectly right. Folks, for this, really, you have f of x equals x squared plus 6x. But because the points a and b lie on the x-axis, you know the y value is going to be equal to zero. It's going to be at something zero and something zero. The y value will be zero here. You don't have y here, though. You've got f of x. But f of x is really just y, so you can just imagine that. The graph, then, as Grace said, will cross the x-axis when y equals 0. So you've got 0 equals x squared plus 6x, or x squared plus 6x x equals 0. After that then, Kung Fu Matthew, what would you do after that? Factorise! Yes, you're perfectly right. You would factorise that. So you end up with x bracket x plus 6 equals 0. Because you're multiplying them and you get 0, you know either x equals 0 or x adds 6 equals 0. If x equals 0, well, that's the answer. That's one point. If x adds 6 equals 0, subtract 6 from both sides, and x would equal negative 6. Therefore, you know it's going to cross the x-axis at 0 and negative 6. Obviously, the one on the left is a, so that's going to be the smaller value, so that will be negative 6, 0, and b would be 0, 0. How could you go about finding out c, though? How could you get that? Well, hopefully you remember, looking at quadratics, that a quadratic is going to be symmetrical. So you know this point C is going to be half, is going to be halfway between A and B. So taking those two points, we've got negative 6, 0 and 0, 0. C is the turning point, so it's halfway between A and B. So in other words, it's halfway between negative 6 and 0. Obviously, you can work that out easily enough, and you know the x value or C is going to be negative 3. It's halfway between 0 and negative 6. If you know x is negative 3, how could you work out y? Well, remember, f of x is really just y. It's y equals x squared plus 6x. So go back up to that equation and replace the x with negative 3. So you've got negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3. If you work that out, you end up with 9 minus 18, which becomes negative 9. So you know that point is going to be negative 3, negative 9. So that's us found the values of a, b, and c. From there, sketch the graph then for part b of f of x plus 8. How could you do that? Well, that's your original graph. And because you, there's a plus 8 on the end, we've got f of x plus 8. Every single point will move up 8. So this point here, instead of being negative 6, 0, it will then move up 8. This point here, instead of being 0, 0, will move up 8. And this point here, C, is also going to move up 8. And you just have to think about what the new points would be. Remember, the Y value is going to increase by 8. So the X will stay as negative 6, and the Y will increase by 8. So it'll be a negative 6, 8. This point here, instead of being 0, 0, it will then be at 0, 8. Or it's going to cross the Y value at 8. This point here, negative 3, negative 9. If you add 8 to the y value, you'll have negative 3, negative 1. And that will be the new graph. State the images of the points A, B, and C. Again, state the image just means where would those points end up. So you know point A is now going to be at negative 6, 8. Point B is going to be at 0, 8. And point C is going to be at negative 3, 1. The way you write the image of the point is you put a dash after the letter. So that means the image of the point, or where it's going to end up, A would be at negative 6, 8, B would be here, and C would be here. And that's how you would do that one. If you put them side by side, again, you can easily see that this graph on the right has moved up. Or it might help going back the way if you just look at them on the same graph. You can see that the graph has moved up. Give some of these questions a shot on page 36. It's exercise 3C. Have a go. Any problems, let me know. Enjoy. Have fun.